So what we're going to do today is review two leading personal scanners. To the left, we have the Fujitsu S1500, which is considered a high-end personal scanner. And to the right, we have the NEAT company's uh, NEAT desk, which is considered uh, their top-of-the-line scanner. Both of these scanners allow you to scan both sides of a document at once in a single pass um, in full color in two to three seconds per page. So it's very fast uh, and uh, uh, extremely useful for scanning all kinds of documents. So both of them look fairly attractive. I just want to show you what they look like when we uh, you know, pull out the sheet feeders and the guides and so on. And as you can see, both of them expand quite a bit on the desk. So let's take a quick look at what came with the NEAT uh, desk. came with a welcome kit. Besides the NEATWORKS software, which is one of their distinguishing features, that's the software that actually reads the uh, receipt, it comes with some calibration paper. Okay, now what, what exactly is this calibration paper for? Well, it's all about skewing. So sometimes when you scan a receipt in, it doesn't scan perfectly straight. It kind of comes in on an angle. And this happens from time to time as it feeds uh, the receipt into the scanner. So both of these uh, scanners, what they try to do is de-skew. They'll do some image processing to try to rotate that page so it's perfectly straight when you view it. What I found, however, is that the Fujitsu does a vastly better job than the Neat Desk and that this isn't just a matter of aesthetics but it actually um, could potentially affect your wallet and it will also affect how things look like when they're printed out. So let's take a look. Um, so what I'm going to do now is load up Neatworks. So I have on my screen here, Neatwork. And what they do is they've divided the screen into three sections. To the left is an inbox for receipts. In the middle, business cards, and to the right, documents. They claim their software can distinguish between the three um, following a scan and automatically load it there. Now, um, what you can see here is one receipt that is clearly skewed. I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. So you can see that the receipt is skewed, but you also notice some dark um, black triangles to the left and to the right of the receipt. Unfortunately, whenever a receipt is skewed, this is the sort of thing you see with the neat desk. It, um, those regions become completely black. Now, how will this affect your pocket? So when you print out a receipt, you'll actually see this black to the left and to the right. And when you purchase toner, it's always based on an assumption of a certain um, coverage when they quote you the number of pages. So for example, they'll say this, this toner, it's rated at 3,000 pages. So it'll help you, it'll print three, th you can print 3,000 pages um, with this toner pack. But the assumption is that you're only um, having black, like the, the toner is only going to cover 5% of the page. And this holds true for things like Microsoft Word documents where the vast majority of the page is white and you know if the text on the page does constitute approximately 5 to 10 percent. But when you look at this, um, these black regions, they're 100 percent black. And um, as a result, uh, when it prints on your page, this is what it's going to look like. And uh, it's just going to consume your toner um, considerably faster than um, an alternate solution. Um, so let's take a look at this receipt here. And, and actually, this black, they say that you can eliminate by calibrating the scanner properly, but this happened immediately at following calibration. And um, it doesn't happen to every receipt, but it does happen every so often, uh, I found, when trying the NEAT receipts uh, scanner, NEATWORKS software. Now, you'll notice that uh, 
It also has the second, like the back of the receipt. So if there's any terms and conditions, they captured all of that. But let's take a look at how well it recognized the information on the receipt. So it correctly captured the date, but take a look at the city. The city is 256 megabytes. The state is RAM. Uh, clearly it didn't get that correct. And look at the phone number, it didn't get that correct either. The street address seems to contain the amount 179.99. So, as you can see, um, you know, it doesn't always recognize receipts correctly. And I found that on almost every receipt that I scanned, there was uh, some follow-up required. It was very rare for it to get it right the first time. So let's take a look. I have here a receipt, and you can see there's a hole in it. And I try to create a situation, you know, somewhat realistic. So. Often you'll find receipts that have a staple. You have to remove the staple before you throw it into a scanner, otherwise it could potentially scratch the head. You'll see the receipt is a little bit crumpled up, uh, you know, not, not perfectly straight. This is not unusual. A lot of people put their receipts in their wallets, and so it has been folded in the middle. Um, and what I would like to see now is the performance of these two scanners and just compare um, the outcome. So I'm going to load the receipt facing us. That's the way it works with the NEAT scanner. And you'll notice it has three compartments. One here that goes from here to here uh, is for documents. And they claim you can scan up to 10 documents in this uh, feeder. 10 receipts, and this is the fixed width area for receipts. And finally, 10 business cards. And they claim you can do all three of these uh, at the same time. I mean, sorry, in a single go. So I'm going to press this button here. It says scan on it to try to initiate the scan. You'll see now that it uh, appears in the neat receipts and it's trying to read it. Okay, it's now processed the receipt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in the inbox Look at the last receipt that was scanned. And here it is. You'll notice there's a little bit of black, but it's not awful. Still, it's there. And let's take a look at what the recognition, what it recognized. So, it correctly recognized the date. It correctly recognized the method of payment. Um, the amount is correct at $87. So not bad, but it didn't get the vendor. And that's quite common, I found, um, except for some national vendors like Staples. I found that it was quite common that I was required to enter the vendor. So now let's scan the same receipt with the Fujitsu ScanSnap. So what I'm going to do now it's customary with um, Fujitsu to scan things face down. So I'm going to adjust the width so it's the correct width. I'm going to put the receipt face down. And it only has a single button. So I'm going to press that now. And on my screen, shows me a picture of the last page scan and asks me if I'm finished. Now this is an optional thing, but I've turned it on. And it's really great when you're scanning a huge stack of receipts and there are various sizes. Some of them are full page documents, some of them are smaller. And you, don't, you want to adjust that width um, several times. So I'm just going to click uh, finish scanning. It's asking me for a file to save it to. And there's several ways that you can upload to my um, chosen document uh, management solution, which is Evernote. One is I've written a custom script that allows me to apply some tags and some description. I'm just going to add no description right now. But there's also um, instructions that you can find online how to integrate with Evernote, and it instantly will um, 
apply the file to Evernote. So before we load up Evernote, I'm just going to look at one last thing about the um, Neatworks, I mean the Neat scanner. You'll see that where the staple was, there was black. And now what I'm going to do is look at the same receipt in Evernote, which is where I've uploaded uh, the receipt to. So you can see that, you know, the black is quite limited. Here it is. Um, notice the black edge, it just is virtually non-existent. It's clean. Okay. Now the other interesting thing is about Evernote is that it OCRs whatever you upload. So in this case, um, the receipt says, the receipt says, um, just going to hold it up in front of the camera here, Kalista Grand. So I'm going to, in this search box, enter the word Kalista. And you can see that in the um, preview pane, only two receipts show up, and the, they're both Kalista Grand. And um, what I like about this is, while it is possible to, um, while it is possible to um, OCR locally on your own machine, it's, I found it much, more, much faster and more convenient to push this OCR process to the cloud because it can take potentially 5 to 10 seconds per page. And by just uploading it straight to the cloud, it's their problem. And if you're an Evernote Premium user, uh, they will do it usually within a minute for you. And they even will recognize your handwriting if you upload the file as a JPEG. So just to show you really briefly, this is the setup I have with Evernote. I have a whole series of tags. Over here we have tags focused on the type of document. Um, you know, whether it's a manual, a receipt, a statement, that sort of thing, whether it's a personal or for business, the type of expense. I even have the vendors I deal with, that sort of thing. Um, and and uh, the year. And I found that this setup is extremely useful for me um, in my daily life of organizing things. So ultimately, what I chose was the Fujitsu. Um, I found that the scans were cleaner, but the other thing that persuaded me was that the NEAT platform, uh, I consider it proprietary, and by that I mean it's really hard to get information out. You can get some information, but um, you know, you can't write custom scripts for it. You can't um, view your receipts on various mobile platforms as you can with the Evernote um, Fujitsu solution. And ultimately, being a part of a proprietary platform was, um, was a huge sway factor for me. Um, and, and the other thing I found was when I looked at online reviews, a, a lot of people were reporting that the neat work software became slow over time as the database size increased and that they said that the database size increased rapidly so they had one person reported that they had less than um, 200 receipts but the database size was already in the gigabytes and it was it was very very slow so um, ultimately I picked the Fujitsu solution um, and uh, I hope this uh, review was useful to you Thank you. And I also hope that you will um, join my channel as I post other reviews online. Thank you.